support trade risks so that lenders may avail more of their own balance sheets and transactional capabilities to support their customers with facilities to finance import of inputs, production assets, and working capital for um, development of these regional export cells. Through this initiative, the industry hopes to support manufacturers and traders to unlock the potential referred to above. I must add, however, that even as we unveil this regional export facility today, we are cognizant that beyond financing, other challenges currently constrain regional trade, and these are not limited to, security concerns, poor transport and logistics infrastructure, which impaired timely access to raw materials, stocks, as well as transportation of finished goods to the local and regional markets. In some countries, absence of a regional settlement framework, superintended by the central bank, such as the regional real-time growth settlement mechanism, which makes it really difficult to manage and track receivables and other transactional um, products across the region. There is also the non-uniform tax protocols across the region and inability to equitably enforce tax obligations which creates an ambiguous competitive landscape, interferes with price mechanisms and in the end disrupts the market unfavorably. It is for this reason that all other stakeholders and facilitators of trade will need to play their part as we play ours through this initiative. We therefore still have a lot more work to do with the regulator, Bank of Uganda, the policymakers, Ministry of Finance, Trade and their respective agencies, as well as counterparts across the borders in those regional markets to ensure that the objectives and outcome of these initiatives are achieved. We're counting on your support um, with action. As I conclude, I wish to thank, as well as call for the support of the other sister umbrella bodies and partners, especially Private Sector Foundation Unit, Uganda Manufacturers Association, CASITA, to support and ensure this initiative delivers the much needed and intended outcome. I encourage the Ugandan manufacturers and traders to share this news widely and embrace this initiative and utilize the facilities to expand and grow exports to the regional markets. I also call upon um, government and development partners to lend this industry initiative their unwavering support. I thank all member financial institutions and the Uganda Bankers Association umbrella and the various risk management partners mentioned earlier participating in this initiative for their commitment to this intervention. Lastly, allow me to salute the teams that have accorded their invaluable time and effort to the development of this initiative, especially our uh, Secretariat and uh, World Broad. Thank you very much, and the team that you worked with. And I uh, now would like to allow World Broad to talk us through the detail of this um, initiative. But I thank you all for listening to me. Welcome once again. Thank you very much, Chair. Let's put our hands on the facility. Next slide. First of all, the framework is that we have exporters, and they will fall in several categories, whether it's an SME, a corporate, a multinational. Part of the conversation we'll have after this launch will be that there will be many small-scale providers who may need to congregate in order to make reasonable export quantities. That logistical organization may need to be done by the export companies, the various traders, uh, but also the warehousing, and then the other side, the buyers as well, other than dealing with, you know, 1,000, 200,000 small buyers can be a challenge. So we need to, you know, make that easier. Some of the other things we need to talk about is the transportation. Congo in particular has road challenges. We have Uganda Air Cargo. The financial sector is willing to have a conversation if 
Uganda Air Cargo requires more financing, so be it, so that it can do 10 routes a day to fly cargo from Uganda to Congo, to Southern Sudan, to Burundi. But of course the good thing with private sector is when they see opportunity, I'm sure there will be very many more private sector cargo planes flying to Congo. If we do this for three, four years, by that time, uh, the road to Congo, perhaps the government would have worked on. So but the, there are many, uh, the, the first people and beneficiaries are the exporters themselves. The financial institutions, all of them are participating. UPA is the custodian of this interest, including putting it together and engaging the other third party partners, the risk insurance providers, manufacturers, exporters, and of course the, the buyers themselves in those respective countries. And under there, there are insurance agencies, guarantee agencies to mitigate risk, country risk, political risk, security risk, credit risk, price fluctuation risk, and all the other risks that happen, including operational risk, and of course, settlement risk, uh, so that once you have exported, you can be paid. So that's the overall framework, and there are frontline, front office people, and there are back end people to enable it. The next slide. So the facility is currently one trillion. There is no minimum uh, limit to say you are only allowed to borrow 10 million or 100 million or 1 billion. It is based on your needs as a borrower, based on the orders you have got, the quantum of orders that you have got. The appraisal will be done by the financial institution so that they can determine that yes, you need 100 million, you need 900 million, you need 2 billion. It doesn't matter. I want to see that there's offtake as much as possible. Or if it needs you to borrow only 10 million and you are 100 of you in order to fulfill an order, it is also possible. All the financial institutions will be participating in it, and again, the target group is open. It's really an open checkbook that as long as you have export business, um, and then you qualify and the appraisal finds you suitable. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> 